Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite ways to get real world objects into Blender. For this method, you're gonna need a scanner. I picked this one up at a thrift store for free. They were throwing it out. It's a copier, scanner, and fax machine. We're only interested in the scanner part. The biggest advantage of this method is that with a scanner, you get even lighting on the entire object you're scanning. There are no shiny spots, dark spots, or shadows. The object will be perfectly evenly lit. It also ensures that the object you are scanning is perfectly aligned. If you take a photo with a camera, the object could be slightly rotated and not completely perpendicular with the camera. With a scanner, you won't have to worry about that. That being said, there are some significant disadvantages. One being that obviously the object you're scanning has to be smaller than the scanning area. The other disadvantage, and this is a big one, the object must be flat. Flat. If you are trying to scan an object that has raised areas, then the entire object is not going to be able to make contact with the glass. And any part not making contact with the glass will be out of focus and blurry, and you'll be better off using a camera. So it must be flat. So you might be thinking the scanner seems pretty limited because you can only scan flat objects. But actually it's not, because there are tons of flat objects that can be scanned. Boxes, books, CDs, DVDs, notebooks, handwritten letters, fabric, labels, just to name a few really anything that is flat. So I'm going to demonstrate how this works with this cardboard box. All you have to do is scan each side one at a time. And since there are six sides, we will end up with six separate images. Now just combine all these images into one. You can do this in Photoshop, but if you're like me and you don't like having to pay a monthly fee for software, you can just do this right in Blender. Just import all of your images as planes. In the materials properties under settings, set the blend mode to opaque for each one of them. You're also going to want to change the shader from principal BSDF to an emission shader. If you have a light source in your scene, you can go ahead and delete that. Now in edit mode, use the knife tool and trace around your object and delete all the faces you don't want. Repeat this for all six images. Now just align all your images in front of a camera, hit F12, and save that as a PNG. Now you have a texture ready to apply in Blender. And the fastest way to do this is to use the project from view function. Just line up each side and do it in a way that makes sense. You may need to refer back to your real object on how to align each face. Add a bit of bevel to the edge and there you go. You have a decent looking low poly box. And we can actually use this same method to apply textures to objects with different shapes than the original. For instance, I scanned the square piece of styrofoam and then modeled a packing peanut in Blender and applied the texture to it. So now we have packaging to go in our box. Great. What can you do with it? Well, you could build a giant elaborate box maze, maybe add some physics, have exploding boxes that lead down a rabbit hole full of wonder and amazement. Really, the options are only limited to your imagination.